initiative, all the smart cities that I think is incredibly interesting and important, and that's the reason why I invited her to come and speak to us today. Uh, oh, sorry, I just want her to look up. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead, sorry to interrupt. So, <clears throat> she does have an initiative where she's gonna speak up uh, to you about, so, uh, it's a community initiative, and uh, I think it's something that is very important. And uh, it fit within our subjects. Uh, so um, let's give a round of applause to Land Please. First of all, thank you so much, Rod, for inviting me to speak. And uh, secondly, if uh, someone while well, I speak maybe can help me bring this out <coughs> on my uh, screen. Um, okay, just a switch, just toggle. Uh, oh, so this is showing, yeah, okay. Just toggle, yeah, toggle to my uh, other, oh, maybe this one, I think I know. Oh, there we go. <clears throat> the nope. I know there is a toggle for. Oh, oh that's where we are. Yeah. Oh, okay. I could. Yeah. <laughs> um, then I think if I get my cursor back, do you see it, it coming back? You, uh, I just needed to point to that um, smart, secure cities uh, now uh, G slides file. <coughs> oh, yay, you got it. Is the G, yeah, G slides, so maybe up a little bit. Uh, up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, I've, uh, so well, yeah, thank you for helping me out on this. Um, I have a lot of files and images. Some of them were taken from the recent um, keynote. It's called Smart Secure Cities Now. Yeah, G slides. <clears throat> All right, and so, uh, yeah, here, <laughs> I'm uh, reusing this set of slides because I think this is the perfect audience. And uh, I don't mean to uh, compete with Anne Marie's uh, a call to action earlier, but maybe this is another way that we are actually very, very well aligned in that the people here and in this group are very precious. I think we both recognize that. And what I'm here to talk about is that there is a large platform, a large stage under the initiative led by NIST and Homeland Security Department for smart, secure cities for everyone here to put your talents and passion to work. So what I mean by that, let me take you through this a little bit. And before I do that, let me give a little bit of intro of myself. So hey, I like to call myself a cyber 007 turned M. This is why the cyber 007 part? That's because I have tracked down hackers who, uh, for one example, who created millions of online accounts at financial institutions. At that time, I just, this is, happened a long time ago, so I can name the names, uh, Charles Schwab. And so that hacker had defrauded Google and Facebook and many others. And then when he came to Charles Schwab, guess what? He met the 
right, matches. So myself and my team was, we were not able to stop him, but we also tracked him down because he had to do some reconnaissance and he left some trails um, at our firm. And so we eventually tracked him down and uh, foiled his plan to make millions of dollars through the new account, you know, linking and collecting the, tri the um, what do you call it? The money link, right? It's uh, two sums with a total of under $1 to prove that you know, your new account here is linked with your new account in another financial institution. So that was, took us a bit of time, several days to figure that out, but we did. And we were able to, with the trails that we have built up, um, FBI and Secret Service both raced to the house to uh, arrest the person. So, so that's why I'm like, okay, I think I can call myself that. In the trenches for about 10 uh, years. And the turn M part is because, guess what? I realized that it's like whack the mole game. You spend millions of dollars on our good people side. You arrest one guy who actually spent only, you know, a couple of hours, not even much money, right? They can buy those tools so easily now online. So it's not a efficient and effective game. So I started to do more of the management side, awareness training, cybersecurity programs, cybersecurity strategies, um, all of that. And then uh, the other end part is that I became a mother. So I started to think about my youngsters' uh, information security and privacy. So I also by then I moved to Cisco for a couple of years and the youngster started growing. I'm like, oh, time can, you know, it's not waiting for me. So I switched gears and uh, established a nonprofit called Adaptable Security. So you all know Adaptable, that is the ultimate state any business can get to. You, there is no absolute security. The best we can do is to stay one step ahead of the hackers, and that's the most, e most uh, efficient, cost-effective way as well. So, uh, long story short, and then uh, this about earlier this year, in March, I started volunteer with this Global City Teams Challenge, um, which was led by NIST and Homeland Security Department. So together, they have this Smart Secure Cities and Communities Challenge. And so they were like, oh, Lam, you are what we need. We have been trying to get this security side going for smart cities. But we haven't seen much effect. So come on board. Become the co-chair, along with the Homeland Security uh, Department Deputy Director, Scott. So he's the other co-chair. So together, we are, oh. I, my apologies, I forgot to keep going. Uh, let me log in. <coughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, I double clicked, but uh, uh, maybe the precision is not there. Hmm. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> so now it's <this> selected. <laughs> I'm fast. Oh, oh, I see. There's a display. Uh huh. <coughs> See? 
All right. So uh, let me s then continue on to, okay. To the, the first one. This is, by the way, the keynote that I gave at a recent um, conference that NIST and the Homeland Security jointly hosted at NIST headquarters. <clears throat> so smart cities, as we know, a lot of cities are trying to do it, right? So it's here to stay. We don't need to go into the benefits of it. Um, so I'm just going to keep on going into the next one. And secure cities, as we know, not quite there. We all have heard about the Atlantic <clears throat> City incident. <clears throat> and so also, by the way, um, I'm totally open to answering questions along the way. So you don't have to save it until the end. Um, and then historically, this is where we have come in the past uh, 30 years or so. Uh, the graph only shows a the past 10 years or so, but um, guess what? It's not doing really well. And some would say, hey, we haven't spent enough money on this issue. Guess what? We have the budget in terms of the GDP has been consistently climbing. <clears throat> so what do we do next? Some optimistic people among us say, there's got to be something we can do, right? There's, you know, we have sent uh, people to the moon. This we surely can handle. Um, and so can we throw more money in it? As a matter of fact, that's not going to address the issue. As this, uh, some smart people have done through the, in this research you have seen. So it's Zurich uh, Insurance Company and the Atlantic Council, they did this research together. There is going to be a point when the costs from cybersecurity data breaches and privacy breaches um, will equal the benefits from the internet um, communications information technologies. So what do we do? And not to pile it on, <laughs> the hacker, the incidents due to hacker, intentional hacking, actually has been rising way faster or pretty much the more, more of the rage now. And then now, <laughs> Another thing that everyone has been talking about, the Internet of Things, smart cities. Uh, of course, IoT is only a part of the smart cities, but it's going to uh, be raising the scale to at least five times more uh, attack service than before. So that also, not just the device, amount of devices, right? You know, also because of the people. So traditionally, you know, large uh, enterprises and uh, municipalities, et cetera. The, the people as these were trained better. Now with the, all the consumers joining the attack surface, so it's anyone's bet. And here is uh, some uh, hacking incidents as examples. The first one, everyone knows about Mirai. And the, free, the, the frightening part is that the compromise only takes under two minutes. Is that a fast? And the example of it shows that, oh, initially, because of it being so potent and damaging, some um, experts said, oh, there's got to be nation states behind this, right? A famous, uh, what's his name, Schneider? He said, yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, it turned out it's three college students not even graduated. So what does that tell us? The devious mind could happen anywhere uh, as long as someone wants to go there uh, with the right set of skills, it can happen anywhere. By, I mean, among any uh, population is the, uh, that is the scary part. And of course now they have released the, the basic code into the wild. So that basically makes it that much harder. And the second example is the fish tank, smart fish tank. 
So that's the example in, in Las Vegas, right? That example showcases that. And it can happen in the least expected places. So now that's what we're facing. And then to top, that's what the smart cities are happening in this kind of environment. And that also, by the way, is why uh, the in CIOs and the CISOs, the CISOs, are so scared of right now. So when I was trying to, when I was helping uh, one of the uh, anecdote, right, um, I was just helping a major municipality in the Bay Area hiring their first CISO, the Chief Information Security Officer. And <laughs> the, the CIO, first thing in the morning, right, you know, many candidates are lining up. And the first thing, we are just getting ready. The CIO tells me, did you see the uh, Atlantic uh, CTU data breach yet? I'm like, oh, no, I have been busy <laughs> trying to get to, you know, helping you. He's like, it just happened. Our purpose now is to hire a person to help us to not show up in the <laughs> news like that. So they actually are very much uh, monitoring it very nervously and very closely, right? So along with it, um, so now because of the smart uh, secure cities, I just have a little bit of plug in. Uh, many uh, municipalities are aware of it and they are tapping into this NIST DHS led initiative to get our help. So the stage is ready for people who are passionate and wanted to do something uh, to join in, join forces together. All right, to, to come back to the slides, the, thing, the thinking pattern here, which is that, okay, our uh, lovely lady here said, oh, after examining <laughs> the hacking uh, examples and uh, trends, etc., I know the secret is adoption, right? If everyone, the, ca the, the consumers can adopt our all solutions, the, ca the camera makers can adopt the solutions and the casinos as the organizations that uses smart technologies can adopt um, our solutions, then problem solved. But nice observation. The thing is that this, the, our solution providers industries have been trying that, right? Spending a lot of money. Uh, RCA conference, uh, so many people go, but the adoption among the key uh, population is still not quite there. They don't go to our sites. So what do we do? So this dialogue continues on. It goes that incentives and consequences need to be in place to encourage adoption. Take one simple example. Equifax, after the humongous data breach, happened, the stock price dropped by how much? I, th I think at one point it's by 30%. But then unfortunately, number one is post the data breach, not, right, not, uh, no transparency for people to have a voice. And number two, after a couple of months, stock price goes back. That is the problem. And some transparency needs to happen to allow the key members, especially our communities of the people with the power, to actually have the voice be heard by the people who are dying to have such knowledge, right? So this is just a quick layout of the sectors in the society. So we all want to have that. Large businesses want adoptions, especially the solution providers, and people want adoption, but they don't know. They don't know what. Like one, uh, after the Target data breach, one lady said, oh, I'm never going to go back to Target again. She was defrauded, right? And I was like, lady, good luck. Where else are you going to go? You, she literally does not know which business offers her better protection. 
right? So I think that's where we, the people who have been in the trenches, who have the skills and talent and passion, have a responsibility. Well, I don't, don't want to say responsibility, it's a heavy word, but it's a place where we can use our talent, okay? And later on, I'll show you where the stage is already set up for you to use the talent. The leaders already have seen that as well. That's why they set up, although they launched this initiative called Smart Secure Cities and Communities Challenge. All right, so the largest part, SMB Gov, that sector, as we, we just already touched on, they are very nervous, they want to do something, but they face uh, issues, two bottlenecks. One, I just came back from a CIO retreat and a CISO retreat, and the Washington uh, State military uh, head, or let's say, I don't remember exactly the title, he said, we can't compete with Google and Amazon. You know, the million dollars, they, they, they can invest in the need, but we can't compete, so this is where we are at. So afterwards, I, sh I shared my business card with him. He's like, oh yes, let's connect up, please, right? So there is that humongous need, but the platform until now was not quite there. So then let's continue on with also the larger businesses. They also have a need because they continuously share, spend a lot of money at for co on conferences like RSA, but the key demographics, they're not present. They don't go there, right? So earlier I showed that uh, number, 99.7% and 50%. Guess what they are? 99.5% of the businesses are small and medium-sized businesses in the American society. That's why they are the backbone of the economy. Now in terms of the people, employed by this sector. They are nearly 50% of the people. Now, if you add government employees, that number is much higher than 50%. So I, <laughs> I got lazy, I did not you know, add the numbers into here, but that gives you the picture, right? So everyone has a need. Now with the platform, we can give each other what we need, and then also get what we want. And that's the smart secure cities. And that uh, Cybersecurity and Privacy Advisory Committee, CPAC, that's the committee that I co-chair with the DHS uh, Deputy Director, right? So now everyone gets what they want. And the people, one deliverable from this includes the platform that can give the transparency. And of course, it also gives the hackers, the white hat hackers, the voice, the platform to share their talent as well. Um, all right, and so SMBG side, of course, they will get good help. So this good help can come in the uh, pro bono projects or paid projects. So here, I'll just share that we already have some municipalities who have such projects so where we're talking and then so there are uh, pro bono projects opportunities for people who wanted to gain real life experience. And then there are also paying project uh, roles who pe who, for people who already have done it and uh, want to have a, a side gig, right? And so in this side gig, you can also mentor other um, less experienced folks. So by doing it this way, we raise the availability of people like yourselves. All right, so uh, does it work? This, you know, PP, public private partnership, does it work? So it actually works. I uh, here I just have a quick example to show that uh, in early uh, October, we had a event that some of the talented people here 
uh, went to. So for a first year event, we had many um, larger private businesses who also share our vision, who came through to sponsor. And we have a lot of the professionals from all of these uh, professional organizations present. And we also have the small and medium businesses and governments present at that. So that symposium happened with all of these uh, people who, by the way, uh, do some of them are first time goers to a cybersecurity event altogether, right? And what is the result? Did people learn anything? This came the result from themselves. So we're <laughs> three additional sponsors wanted to help next year, and 95% of the people want this event again. <laughs> One of the unsure people is a friend of mine, and he's going through a career transition. So uh, I'll excuse him <laughs> uh, for saying unsure uh, here. And then also the other side is that most of the people, 95%, also said they are going to put the learning into changing behaviors. That, I think, is a really promising, positive outcome. Uh, so now that's one example of this public-private partnership um, really works, right? And then besides that one thing, there are quite a few other things that we have in the roadmap that will also work, all right? So before I go into those milestones, let me also touch on how this uh, Smart to Secure Cities Initiative work. So, so far, over 200 cities already globally already participate in this initiative. And under this initiative, there are uh, so-called super clusters. So people in a certain sector, they group together and contribute their expertise. So we have agriculture and rural, data supercluster, public safety supercluster, transportation, so smart transportation, and smart utility, smart wireless, and smart education. There's a smart uh, buildings that uh, is being formed as we speak. Now, for all of these superclusters, we in the CPAC will provide support and help across the board to them. What does that mean? We will, we ha currently have members from their leadership team to be on our board, and we assign one to two champions to help them. Okay, so there's a continuous feedback mechanism. So it's not top heavy, so that the super clusters, they, right now, in the past, they didn't want to adopt they felt like any other <laughs> companies felt that, oh, you want me to implement securities? That's going to slow me down. I, why would I do that, right? So uh, now, because we are implementing this way, we are, it's an incentive for them to use our help rather than feeling like they are mandated uh, and forced to do it. So some of the other milestones we have listed here also will give them additional incentives to come on board. And these milestones are being delivered by our CPAC members. And our CPAC members include just you and me. You know, if you, ha you think you have one to two hours a week to join in, contribute your expertise, great, that's exactly for you, okay? And it could be also for businesses that identify with the vision and join in. That would be even better. Because with business support, we can scale that much faster. Right? Okay, let me, with that, let me just um, touch on the milestones a little bit. So you, you, you know, and then hopefully some of you may decide that uh, either yourself or someone you know uh, could be interested and then refer them to this uh, initiative, All right? So four big 
um, categories of deliverables and milestones. First of all, it's a guidebook. This guidebook is going to be, if I use an analogy, you, you probably all have heard about the NIST cybersecurity framework, right? NIST NC cybersecurity NSF, okay? Um, and then some of you may have heard about even the DHS um, cyber risk, uh, cyber resilience review. I, I never can get that right first time. Cyber resilience review, CRR, which is a tool to make the, end, uh, the cybersecurity framework more operational, easier for municipalities or anyone can, uh, to start using it, right? So even with that, it's still hard, right? If you don't have a professional on your team, it's still hard. Uh, so I liken it to this. Those two things are like the paper map. If you want to go to a place, you circle it out and you circle the destination out and then you plot out your, your uh, path together. But now in this day of age, we, CPAC, wanted a one size does not fit, does not fit all tool to help people. It's like a ways in comparison to the traditional map. Um, when I say ways, anyone who doesn't know what it is, ways or maps, Google Maps, etc. right? So you put it in, starting point, you give it also the, the destination point, then it will give you the optimum <coughs> route based on real-time traffic information. Oh, this route has an accident, you should not go there, right? So in the same way for a smaller business organization, if they don't capture a whole lot of data, why do they have to use the CRR, right, to, to get uh, more compliant? So this is how we're going to make it work. We provide a guidebook, and then to couple that with a data-based tool to help the organizations do their security. And then this data-based tool, we're also going to um, use as, as little jargon as possible. For example, we're probably not even going to use the word cybersecurity. Instead, we're going to use trustworthy, right? So that anyone can understand. So that is the idea, a data-based tool so that any organization can put some people to take a first look and then get some idea. And now if they realize that, oh, shoot, this is beyond me. This is, I don't know what this uh, is about. What risk? Then the next thing is projects. So CPAC also has a team of experts. That's what we're talking about. You can also come in. I think at this point, <laughs> just go without it. Um, can also assemble a team to do a project for them. How handy is that, right? So we anticipate that with this approach, the adoption will be that much faster. We already have several municipalities approaching us. For example, even at that NIST event that I presented at, one uh, city, uh, Ple City Pleasant, they have 4,800 people. They're like, yeah, please sign us up. So now I just need to have more people, like experts like you guys, to join on board, and then let's do it for them. Right? So that's the projects. The third one is the symposiums and uh, webinars to continue the spreading of the word. So the symposium, you saw one example. Um, and the, in February 20th to 22nd, there's going to be a much bigger scale. Over 1,000 people will be gathering uh, in Washington, D.C. Yes, let's go there. So. Yeah, DC, yep. And the best part is that the booth space, I was told, get as many as you want and for free. That's, that, that's how, <laughs> how determined, yes, the central, uh, at the federal level, 
uh, the leaders want to get this message across. So I am now, uh, okay, uh, getting this word out through you guys. Uh, so spread the word as wide as you can, and we will want to see you, right? So that's the third one. The last uh, box is about, um, see if I can remember, is about um, transparency, oh, incentives and uh, consequences, right? We wanted to mobilize the entire society because ultimately this is their right and this is their privacy and uh, financial security and all on the line. And they want to have such information. It's just that right now, we as an industry have not provided them with uh, the right language, the right tool to use yet. So under this initiative, we will do exactly that. We will provide um, a consortium to certify the smart, uh, to certify secure cities so that those smart cities have incentive to become secure in the meantime, right? So because the, the, some people uh, just uh, recently, I think today, yesterday, CNN argued for IoT, more, more um, comprehensive, stricter IoT uh, regulations. But you know what? By definition, they are not very fast for any regulation to come forward. They are gonna take time. In the meantime, what do we do? We can't be sitting ducks, <laughs> right, on the side. So this is our chance to actually put everything together and let the public voice their power. So that's one initiative. Another one is, uh, I call it a cyber trust map. You are the first one, by the way, uh, in the public group to hear this, because previously I did not even announce that one at the uh, NIST conference. Um, I wanted to build our team up a little bit further before I announce, but in our you know, Silicon Valley, I feel like this is our home. So uh, talking with friends, so I think I, I feel like I can share that with you. What it does is to share with the public that what product has what kind of security uh, posture in a language that they can understand, right? So for example, I know that this security camera protects my uh, privacy, for example. And this is how they do it, right? And then ask the public to rate it. And we also can have our own experts ratings, which our experts ratings will carry more weight, right? Because we know um, exactly what to look for. So that being said, we have all of these great initiatives um, in the plan and the roadmap is, um, is out and the stage is established from uh, the grassroots level uh, as well as the municipality level and all the way up to the federal level. So the call for action is out and I hope you guys are the pioneers to join in. That, with that, I conclude my talk today. Thank you.